Hello and welcome to episode two of the Automation Podcast, brought to you by InsightsInAutomation.com. I'm your host, Sean Tierney, and on today's show we'll be discussing RS Logix 5000 version 20.03, a discussion I think you'll want to hear before deciding if you're going to upgrade to 20.03 or not. But before we jump into what makes 20.03 different, let's first review how different versions of RS Logix 5000 have worked together in the past. Let's start with the example of two coworkers who both have RS Logix 5000 version 16.01 installed. Obviously, they should be able to pass files back and forth without issue. But what happens if one of them upgrades to 16.02? As you might have guessed, all previous versions of RS Logix 5000 allow for seamless sharing of ACD files as long as the major versions are the same. This means that even if I install version 16.03, I could still seamlessly share ACD files with these two coworkers, never even being aware that we had different minor revs installed. So, let's say we take one of these version 16 files and send it out to a client who only has version 15 installed. Well, he wouldn't be able to open the file, and we would have two options to resolve this. First, the best option would be for our client to install version 16 alongside version 15. This is a feature that's been in RS Logix 5000 since version 10. However, if our client was unwilling or unable to install version 16, the other option would be for us to export the file to an L5K and send it to the client. He could then edit the file, changing it from version 16 to 15, and try to import it into RS Logix. And hopefully, he wouldn't have too many errors to fix after he completed the import. Now, let's run through the same situation, but this time our client only has version 17 installed. Well, he's in a better situation, assuming that his PLC can support version 17, he could just open up our version 16 file and convert it to version 17. However, if he made changes and sent it back to us, well, we'd be in the same position as that client who had version 15. We could either install version 17 side by side our existing version 16 install, so we could open the customer's file natively. Or we could ask the customer to export the file to an L5K and take our chances importing it into version 16. So far so good? Okay, so here's where version 20.03 is different. First, I want to go back and remind everyone that that side-by-side -side installation of different versions is only supported for different major versions. You cannot have different minor versions installed on the same Windows installation. So, if you already had version 20.01 installed and wanted to upgrade to 20.03, you would first be prompted to uninstall version 20.01. Got that? Okay, normally this wouldn't be an issue. In fact, normally that would be recommended. However, this is where it gets sticky, so take note. Any program you open and save with version 20.03 can only be opened with version 20.03. That means you wouldn't be able to open it in 20.01 anymore. In addition to that, if you have 20.03 installed and try to go online with a processor that has a 20.01 file in it, you'll first be prompted to upload, save, and download that file to the processor before you can go online. Imagine that one of your colleagues unknowingly upgraded to 20.03, then downloaded that file to a processor and left on vacation. You get called in to troubleshoot that system, but you still have 20.01, so you can't go online with the processor. And I'll let you guess whether or not the error message you'll receive when you try to go online is going to be so cryptic you'll be running to the knowledge base to figure out what it means. At this point, you could go and upgrade the version 20.03, but now you won't be able to go online with any of your version 20 processors that have a version 20.01 file in it. So in summary, many have come to the conclusion that moving to RS Logix 5000 version 20.03 is an all or nothing choice. I have to say I agree with them, but you'll need to make up your own mind on this. Now every time I've run through this explanation, I've gotten the same response. Why? Why did they go and do this? Well, before you go and grab that bottle of Tylenol, let me explain why I think they did this. Note, what follows is my interpretation of why this change was made. If you want to hear it straight from Rockwell, head over to ab.com and read the official release notes. Something I'd encourage you to do anyways. First, Logix Firmware version 20 is going to be with us for quite some time as many Rockwell programmable controllers like the L6 and the L35e 
are never going to support any version higher than version 20. And so with an extended life of version 20 comes the need for long-term support and bug fixes of that version. Now, if you're familiar with software development, you'll understand that if you find a security vulnerability in your software and you fix it, you can't allow that software to be decompiled into an older version because then the changes you made to close that security hole would become obvious. So in making the version 20.03 ACD file more secure, Rockwell needed to ensure it could not be saved as a previous version so that any potential vulnerabilities in the ACD file would not be revealed. And because version 21 was already released, Rockwell didn't have any choice except to release these fixes as a new minor revision. Well, I hope you feel like we've thoroughly covered how version 20.03 is different from other minor versions of RS Logix 5000. If you have any comments or questions or corrections, please don't hesitate to head over to theautomationpodcast.com and let me know by replying to this podcast's post. And you can always stay up to date with all the websites by visiting insightsinautomation.com or by following me on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, where I'm known as Mr. Sean Tierney. Now, before we go, let's take a look what's coming up in our next podcast. Tune in for Episode 3 next week for news about the new 1769 Ethernet adapter announced at Automation Fair 2013. Well, that's it for Episode 2 of the Automation Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Tierney, and until next time, peace.